from getting fined for communicating with teammates to the infamous Spygate. There have been tons of huge fines that F1 teams have had to pay over the years, starting with the 100 grand fine that Ferrari had to pay in 2010. Felipe Massa was leading the 2010 German Grand Prix for Ferrari. However, his race engineer, Rob Smedley, asked him to move aside for his teammate, Fernando Alonso, over the team radio. Smedley said, Fernando is faster than you. Can you confirm you understand? Understand. Massa then slowed down to let Alonso pass him and win the race. This move caused a great deal of controversy, and the FIA launched an investigation into the incident. Team orders were prohibited at the time, and Ferrari was eventually fined $100,000 for their actions. Definitely not a small fine by any means. The case was also forwarded to the World Motorsport Council, which upheld the stewards' decision, but decided not to impose any further sanctions against Ferrari, despite the fine. The move proved to be beneficial for Alonso's championship hopes. He went on to win the title that year, with a margin of just four points over his closest rival. In response to the incident, the FIA relaxed the team orders rules for the 2011 season, allowing teams to use team orders more freely. And well, this was not the first time that Ferrari had been involved in a team orders controversy. In 2002, Rubens Barrichello was ordered to let his teammate Michael Schumacher win the Australian Grand Prix leading to widespread criticism. The incident led to the introduction of the team orders ban, which remained in place until the 2011 season. But I'm just getting started here. Back in 2010, USF1 earned a fine of around $326,000. USF1 was an American-led effort to create a new Formula One team in the United States. The team was founded by Ken Anderson and Peter Windsor and was granted entry to the 2010 F1 World Championship. But the team ultimately failed to enter the championship, leading to an investigation by the FIA. The FIA found that USF1 had violated the sporting regulations and the International Sporting Code by failing to participate in the championship. The team went into liquidation before even entering a race. And here's the best part. And by the best, I mean the absolute worst. The FIA imposed a fine of around $326,000, which was the equivalent of the entry fee for the 2010 championship. The fine served served as an effective forfeiture of the entry fee, and the team was also ordered to pay the FIA's cost for the disciplinary procedure. USF1 argued that Force Majé was the reason for their lack of finances, citing negative media coverage as a significant factor. However, the FIA dismissed their argument, stating that there was no evidence to support their claim. The failure of USF1 was a significant disappointment for American fans of Formula One, especially for the ones who had hoped that the team would provide a much-needed boost to the popularity of the sport in the U.S. The team had attracted significant attention in the media, with many people hoping that it would become a successful American F1 team. In the end, the failure of USF1 highlighted the difficulties that face new teams trying to enter Formula 1. And don't worry, the numbers only go up from here, because in 2020, Racing Point earned a fine of $473,000. This all happened after Renault protested the design of its brake ducts. Renault's team was pissed, as the brakes were very similar to those of the Mercedes 2019 championship winning car. Racing Point argued that it had purchased the brake ducts from Mercedes in 2019, when it was allowed. They further said that it had only copied the design because it had been used in the previous season. The stewards agreed that Racing Point had not breached technical regulations, but it had breached sporting regulations, which now prohibited the purchase of certain intellectual property from other teams. The team was allowed to keep the brake ducts for the remainder of the season. The controversy led to the FIA tightening the rules around the sharing of information. This meant that teams would be more limited in their ability to buy parts from other teams. If I'm being honest, teams are always looking to gain a competitive edge in Formula 1. And let's just say the constantly increasing complexity of the regulations definitely leaves some room for loopholes. Regulators face challenges in keeping up with the rapidly evolving technologies and practices in F1. It's difficult to balance innovation with ensuring a level playing field for all teams. And I think this case is definitely an example of that. This next fine is quite massive as well. And it's the recent $450,000 Aston Martin fine from 2022. In 2021, a new era began in Formula One with the introduction of financial regulations that aimed to limit spending by teams in the sport. Each of the 10 teams was required to submit detailed accounts to the FIA for analysis. The 
goal was to ensure conformity with the $140 million cap on car and performance-related spending. However, in mid-2022, the FIA revealed that not every team had managed to comply entirely with the requirements of the rules. Aston Martin was one of the two teams found to have breached the regulations, resulting in a $450,000 fine for a procedural breach. The breach occurred because the team inaccurately excluded and or adjusted costs in the calculation of its relevant costs, a decision that ultimately led to a lengthy list of inaccurate costs. Although only one team exceeded the spending cap, the governing body levied a hefty fine against Aston Martin, and while they were offered an accepted breach agreement, the FIA was quick to clarify that there was no evidence to suggest that the team had sought or obtained any undue advantage. And somehow, despite that, the team still had to fork over 400 grand. Seems a bit unfair, doesn't it? Financial regulations have long been a subject of debate in Formula One, with teams having different views on their implementation. Some see it as an opportunity to level the playing field. Others argue that it takes away from the essence of the sport, which is the development of cars and the pursuit of speed. And brace yourself for this next one, because it's McLaren's hefty $100 million fine. In 2007, the world of Formula One was rocked by what was then known as Spygate. McLaren, one of the top teams in the sport, was caught in possession of confidential documents. And these weren't just any common documents. Instead, these detailed the technical specifications of their biggest rival Ferrari's cars. The revelation came to light when the documents were discovered at a photocopying shop in the UK, after which the shop employee contacted Ferrari's factory. As a result of this McLaren was hit with a $100 million fine, which was the largest penalty ever imposed in the history of any sport. The controversy led to an extensive investigation by the FIA. During this, it was revealed that a McLaren employee had possession of the confidential documents. The ensuing investigation exposed an elaborate scheme, wherein the employee used the information to improve the performance of the McLaren car. Is it just me, or does this sound like an amazing plot for a movie? As the investigation continued. McLaren was found to be guilty of using confidential information from Ferrari to improve their own cars, which led to their disqualification from the Constructors' Championship. Despite the team's claim that they had no knowledge of the breach, the team's drivers, Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton, were given immunity in exchange for information, allowing them to continue competing for the Drivers' Championship. The whole ordeal was a major embarrassment for the sport and for McLaren, who publicly accepted responsibility for the breach and issued an apology. Hey, at least they apologized. Water under the bridge, right? Anyway, what are your thoughts on some of the biggest fines that F1 teams had to pay? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.